Apolinario Mabina y Maranan, July 23, 1864-May 13, 1903, was a Filipino revolutionary leader, educator, lawyer, and statesman who served first as a legal and constitutional advisor to the revolutionary government, and then as the first Prime Minister of the Philippines upon the establishment of the First Philippine Republic. He is regarded as the UTAK ng Himagsikan, or Brain of the Revolution. Two of his works, El Verdadero Decalogo, The True Decalogue, June 24, 1898, and Programa Constitucional de la República Filipina, The Constitutional Program of the Philippine Republic, 1898, became instrumental in the drafting of what would eventually be known as the Malolos Constitution. Mabina performed all his revolutionary and governmental activities despite having lost the use of both his legs to polio shortly before the Philippine Revolution of 1896. Mabina's role in Philippine history saw him confronting first Spanish colonial rule in the opening days of the Philippine Revolution, and then American colonial rule in the days of the Philippine-American War. The latter saw Mabina captured and exiled to Guam by American colonial authorities, allowed to return only two months before his eventual death in May, 1903. Life Early life and education Apolinario Mabina was born on July 23, 1864 in Barangay Talaga in Tanawan, Batangas. He was the second of eight children of Dionysia Maranan, a vendor in the Tanawan market, and Inocencio Mabina, an unlettered peasant. In 1881 Mabina received a scholarship to go to the Colegio de San Juan de Latran in Manila An anecdote about his stay there says that a professor there decided to pick on him because his shabby clothing clearly showed he was poor. Mabina amazed the professor by answering a series of very difficult questions with ease. His studies at Latran were periodically interrupted by a chronic lack of funds, and he earned money for his board and lodging by teaching children. Law studies Mabina S. mother had wanted him to enter the priesthood, but his desire to defend the poor made him decide to study law instead. A year after receiving his Bachhills N. Arts with highest honors and the title Professor of Latin from Latran, he moved on to the University of Santo Tomas, where he received his law degree in 1894, comparing Mabina's generation of Filipino intellectuals to the previous one of José Rizal and the other members of the Propagandista movement. Journalist and national artist of the Philippines for Literature Nick Joaquin describes Mabina's generation as the next iteration in the evolution of Filipino intellectual development. Europe had been a necessary catalyst for the generation of Rizal. By the time of Mabina, the Filipino intellectual had advanced beyond the need for enlightenment abroad. The very point of Mabina's accomplishment is that all his schooling, all his training, was done right here in his own country. The argument of Rizal's generation was that Filipinos were not yet ready for self-government because they had too little education and could not aspire for more in their own country. The evidence of Mabina's generation was that it could handle the affairs of government with only the education it had acquired locally. It no longer needed Europe, it had imbibed all it needed of Europe. Mabina joined the Guild of Lawyers after graduation, but he did not choose to practice law in a professional capacity. He did not set up his own law office, and instead continued to work in the office of a notary public. Instead, Mabina put his knowledge of law to much use during the days of the Philippine Revolution and the Filipino American War. Joaquin notes that all his contributions to Philippine history somehow involved the law. His was a legal mind. He was interested in law as an idea, as an ideal. Whenever he appears in our history he is arguing a question of legality. Masonry and La Liga Filipina Mabina joined the Fraternity of Freemasonry in September 1892, affiliating with Lodge Balagtas, and taking on the name, Catabay. The following year, 1893, Mabina became a member of La Liga Filipina, which was being resuscitated after the arrest of its founder José Rizal in 1892. Mabina was made secretary of its new Supreme Council. 
This was Mabina's first time to join an explicitly patriotic organization. Mabina, whose advocacies favored the reformist movement, pushed for the organization to continue its goals of supporting La Solidaridad and the reforms it advocated. When more revolutionary members of the Liga indicated that they did not think the reform movement was getting results and wanted to more openly support revolution, La Liga Filipina split into two factions, the moderate Cuerpo de Compromisarios, which wanted simply to continue to support the revolution, and the explicitly revolutionary Katipunan. Mabina joined the Cuerpo de Compromisarios, when José Rizal, part of the La Liga Filipina, was executed in December that year, however, he changed his mind and gave the revolution his wholehearted support. Polio and eventual paralysis Mabina was struck by polio in 1895, and the disease gradually incapacitated him until January 1896, when he finally lost the use of both his legs. 1896 Revolution and Arrest when the plans of the Katipunan were discovered by Spanish authorities, and the first active phase of the 1896 Philippine Revolution began in earnest, Mabina, still ill, was arrested along with numerous other members of La Liga Filipina. Thirteen patriots arrested in Cavite were tried and eventually executed, earning them the title of Thirteen Martyrs of Cavite. José Rizal himself was accused of being party to the revolution, and would eventually be executed in December that year. When the Spanish authorities saw that Mabina was paralyzed, however, they decided to release him. Advisor to the revolutionary government Sent to the hospital after his arrest, Mabina remained in ill health for a considerable time. He was seeking the curative properties of the hot springs in Los Baños, Laguna in 1898 when Emilio Aguinaldo sent for him, asking him to serve as advisor to the revolution. During this convalescent period, Mabina wrote the pamphlets, El Verdadero Decalago, and Ordinanzas de la Revolución. Aguinaldo was impressed by these works and by Mabina's role as a leading figure in La Liga Filipina, and made arrangements for Mabina to be brought from Los Baños to Kawit, Cavite. It took hundreds of men taking turns carrying his hammock to portage Mabina to Kawit. He continued to serve as the chief advisor for General Aguinaldo after the Philippine Declaration of Independence on June 12. He drafted decrees and edited the constitution for the First Philippine Republic, including the framework of the revolutionary government which was implemented in Malolos in 1899. Prime Minister of the Philippines Shortly after Aguinaldo's return to the Philippines from exile in Hong Kong in May of 1898, he tasked Mabina with helping him establish a government. Mabina authored the June 18, 1898 decree which established the dictatorial government of the Philippines. After the Malolos Constitution, the Basic Law of the First Philippine Republic was promulgated on January 21, 1899. Mabina was appointed Prime Minister and also Foreign Minister. He then led the first cabinet of the Republic. Mabina found himself in the center of the most critical period in the new country's history, grappling with problems until then unimagined. Most notable of these were his negotiations with Americans, which began on March 6, 1899. The United States and the Philippine Republic were embroiled in extremely contentious and eventually violent confrontations. During the negotiations for peace, Americans proffered Mabina autonomy for Aguinaldo. S. New government, but the talks failed because Mabina's conditions included a ceasefire, which was rejected. Mabina negotiated once again, seeking for an armistice instead, but the talks failed yet again. Eventually, feeling that the Americans were not negotiating bona fide, he forswore the Americans and supported war. He resigned from government on May 7, 1899. Philippine-American War, Exile, and Return the Philippine-American War saw Mabina taken more seriously as a threat by the Americans than he was under the Spanish, says national artist for literature F. Sionel Jose. The Spaniards underestimated Mabina primarily because he was a cripple. Had they known of his intellectual perspicacity, they would have killed him earlier. 
The Americans did not. They were aware of his superior intelligence, his tenacity when he faced them in negotiations for autonomy and ceasefire. On December 10, 1899, he was captured by Americans at Cayapo, Nueva Ecija, but granted leave to meet with W.H. Taft. In 1901, he was exiled to Guam, along with scores of revolutionists Americans referred to as insurrectos rebels, and who refused to swear fealty to the United States. When Brig. General Arthur MacArthur Jr. was asked to explain by the U.S. Senate why Mabina had to be deported, he cabled, Mabina returned to the Philippines after agreeing to take the oath of allegiance to the United States on February 26, 1903 before the Collector of Customs. On the day he sailed, he issued this statement to the press. To the chagrin of the American colonial officials, Mabina resumed his work of agitating for independence for the Philippines soon after his return from exile. Dad. Not long after his return, Mabina died of cholera in Manila on May 13, 1903 at the age of 38. Historical remembrance Mabina's complex contributions to Philippine history are often distilled into two historical monikers, Brains of the Revolution and Sublime Paralytic. Contemporary historians such as Ambeth Ocampo point out, though, that these two monikers are reductionist and simplistic, and do not do justice to the hero's life and legacy. Brains of the Revolution Because of his role as advisor during the formation of the revolutionary government, and his contributions as statesman thereafter, Mabina is often referred to as the Brains of the Revolution. A historical moniker he sometimes shares with Emilio Jacinto, who served in a similar capacity for the earlier revolutionary movement, the Katipunan. Sublime Paralytic Mabina is also famous for having achieved all this despite having lost the use of his legs to polio just prior to the Philippine Revolution. This has made Mabina one of the Philippines. Most visually iconic national heroes, such that he is often referred to as the sublime paralytic Tagalog, Dakiling Lumpo. Contemporary historians, however, point out that the title obscures Mabina's many achievements. Controversy about Mabina's paralysis Even during his lifetime, there were controversial rumors regarding the cause of Mabina. S. Paralysis. Infighting among members of the Malolos Congress led to the spread of rumors that Mabina's paralysis had been caused by venereal disease, specifically, syphilis. This was finally debunked in 1980, when Mabina's bones were exhumed and the autopsy proved conclusively that the cause of his paralysis was polio. This information reached national artist F. Sionel Jose too late, however. By the time the historian Ambeth Ocampo told him about the autopsy results, he had already published Poan, the first novel of his Rosales saga. That novel contained plot points based on the premise that Mabina had indeed become a paralytic due to syphilis. In later editions of the book, the novelist corrected the error and issued an apology, which reads in part, In the later editions, Mabina's disease, an important plot point, was changed to an undefined liver ailment. The ailing Mabina takes pride in the fact that his symptoms are definitely not those of syphilis, despite the rumors spread by his detractors in the Philippine Revolutionary Government. Tributes Shrines Two sites related to Mabina have been chosen to host shrines in his honor. The house where Mabina died is now located in the campus of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines PUP, in Santa Mesa, Manila, having been moved twice. The simple Nipa retains the original furniture, and some of the books he wrote, and also contains souvenir items, while hosting the municipal library and reading facilities. Mabina was buried in his town of birth, what is now Talaga, Tanawan City, Batangas. An interactive museum containing historical artifacts, his personal properties, books he wrote, and it also provides historical information about him, the Philippines during his time, and some of his town's historical background was constructed, and was recently renovated and improved, on this site. 
It also sells books about him and souvenir items. A replica of the house Mabina was born in was also constructed on the site. Place names Four Philippine municipalities are named after Mabina. Mabina, Batangas Mabina, Bohol Mabina, Compostela Valley, and Mabina, Pangasinan the Mabina Academy is a school in Lipa City, Batangas named after Mabina. The school logo carries Mabina's image. Southern Tagalog Arterial Road or Apolinario Mabina Superhighway is an expressway that connects the province of Batangas to the Slex. Apolinario Mabina Bridge, formerly known as Nagtahan Bridge in the city of Manila, was renamed in his honor. Mabina Reef, also referred to as Johnson South Reef, is a reef claimed by the Philippines in the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. It is currently controlled by the People's Republic of China PRC. In addition to the Philippines and China, its ownership is also disputed by Brunei, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam. Naval Vessels the Philippine Navy's Jacinto class corvette, BRP Apolinario Mabina, PS36, is also named after Mabina. Philippine peso. Mabina's face adorns the Philippine 10 peso coin along with that of Andres Bonifacio. The newer series, new generation currency series only has Mabina. He was also featured on the 10 peso bill that circulated or printed starting with the Pilipino series in 1972 and continued until the Banco Central ng Pilipinas stopped printing these notes new design series version in 2002. From 1972 to 1997, he was the only one to portray on the front of the banknote until it added Andres Bonifacio that were printed from 1997 to 2002. Government awards and citations the Gawad Mabina is awarded to Filipinos for distinguished foreign service, or promoting the interests and prestige of the Philippines abroad. It was established by Presidential Decree No. 490, S. 1974 in Mabina's honor since he was the first Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the First Philippine Republic. The Philippine government presents the annual Apolinario Mabina Awards to Outstanding Persons with Disabilities. Portrayal in media Portrayed by Ronnie Quizon in the film, El Presidente 2012. Portrayed by E.P.I. Quizon in the film, General Luna 2015, and its sequel, Goyo, Ang Batang General 2018. At the height of the film General Luna's popularity, reports of numerous incidents, including one during a Q&A with actor E.P.I. Quizon, in which school-age youths asked why Mabina just sat in a chair throughout the film, implying a lack of familiarity with the famously paralytic statesman. Even President Benigno Aquino III remarked on the implications of the lack of awareness among students, saying, even if only a few students said this, we can say that this is a reflection of how little some of the youth know about history. Later, I will call up Education Secretary Armin Luistro to act on this. Selected works The True Decalogue, El Verdadero Decalogo, June 24, 1898, Contestaciones y Consideraciones al Pueblo y Congreso Norte Americanos Ordinanzas de la Revolución Programa Constitucional de la República Filipina, The Constitutional Program of the Philippine Republic, c. 1898, La Revolución Filipina, The Philippine Revolution, 1931, quote, from Mabina describing his cabinet, on Emilio Aguinaldo and his cabinet members, about Mabina by former military governor of the Philippines, Gen. Arthur MacArthur, describing Mabina before the U.S. Senate's Lodge Committee of 1902, by President Benigno Aquino III, reacting to Philippine students' apparent lack of familiarity with Mabina in 2015, when Mabina was portrayed in the film General Luna, references further reading, Mahul, Cesar Adib. 
Mabina and the Philippine Revolution External links The Philippine Revolution, by Apolinario Mabina at the Austrian Philippine page at Institute of Social Anthropology, University of Vienna MSC.edu Mabina link works by Apolinario Mabina at Project Gutenberg works by or about Apolinario Mabina at Internet Archive Short Biography Apolinario Mabina Essays Apolinario Mabina's Essays on the 1898 Philippine Government Mabina dies from cholera, Filipino ex-Minister of Foreign Affairs Affairs had been three two days. PDF. New York Times, the 14th of May 1903. Retrieved the 30th of April 2008.